Okay, so now let us look at our final question. Question 41. Kylie and Easy wanted to find out the amount of force needed to pull different bar magnets apart from a horseshoe magnet. So we have a horseshoe magnet here. We have a bar magnet here. They are attracting each other. So we want to find out which one is the strongest, which one is the weakest, and we're going to make some interpretations from there. Okay, so Kylie and Easy tested four bar magnets and recorded the data. We have different bar magnets, we have different lengths of the bar magnets, and we have different forces. I'm always going to look at the one with the smallest and the largest number. So what if the force needed to pull the bar magnets apart is the smallest? This means that the strength of the bar magnet is the weakest. Agree? Okay, how about C? The amount of force needed to pull the magnets apart was the greatest. That means for bar magnet C, the strength of bar magnet C is the greatest. So based on the results, name the weakest bar magnet. I will choose magnet B. So that's my answer for 41A. Looking at part B, Kylie made the following hypothesis at the start of the experiment. Kylie said that the longer the bar magnet, the more force is needed to separate them from the horseshoe magnet. Now, if you think about this common sense wise, we know that the length or the size of the bar magnet is not going to affect the strength of the magnet. Why do I say that? How do we increase the strength of a magnet? Okay, we got to refer back to how do we create magnets. Two methods that we learned. The first one is stroking. So we increase the number of times we stroke the magnet in one direction. The magnetic strength of the bar magnet will be stronger. Agree? The other method, electromagnets. How do we increase the strength of the electromagnet? The first one is to increase the number of batteries used in the circuit. The second is to increase the number of coils around the rod. Okay? So based on the results, explain why Kylie's hypothesis is not correct. If you look at this data here, there are two ways that we can go about it. We can either compare bar magnet A and B, okay, or we can compare C and D. So let's say we compare A and B. A, the length of the bar magnet is shorter than B. So shorter, you will think that it is weaker, right, based on Kylie's hypothesis. But if you look at the amount of force needed to pull the magnets apart, A actually required a greater amount of force. This means that A is shorter, but A is stronger, right? The magnetic strength of bar magnet A is stronger. Okay, so now if we were to compare C and D, C has a shorter length than D. So you would expect that C's bar uh, magnet's magnetic strength is going to be weaker than that of D based on Kylie's hypothesis. But for bar magnet C, the force needed to pull the magnets apart was 8 as compared to D's 4, right? So this means that the magnetic strength of bar magnet C is stronger than that of D. Okay, so you can either compare A versus B or C versus D. So this is my answer here. I compared C versus D. I say that although bar magnet D was longer than bar magnet C, the amount of force needed to pull bar magnet D apart from the horseshoe magnet was smaller. Okay, make sure that you use the comparison terms. Do not just tell me the values. Don't tell me 8 units. Don't tell me 4 units. Give me the comparison. So in this case, it's smaller. So this shows that the longer bar magnet D's magnetism, okay, D is longer, right? The longer bar magnet D's magnetism was weaker than the shorter bar magnet C's magnetism. Okay, so that is for part B. And finally, let us look at part C. Using only a steel paper clip and a ruler, describe another way to find out what is the strength of the bar magnets. So this is a very simple experiment. You might even have done this in some of your school science practical. So I'm going to use a steel paper clip. I'm going to use a ruler. How am I going to determine? So I have my ruler here. Okay, for example, and this reading is maybe 0 cm. So I'll put my paper clip here. And then I'm going to put my bar magnet on the other side. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to slowly move my bar magnet towards the paper clip. And I will stop the moment the paper clip starts moving towards the bar magnet. 
So what does this represent? This will represent the maximum distance between the bar magnet and the paper clip, right? At which the magnet is able to attract the paper clip. And this will tell me whether the magnet is stronger or weaker, okay? Because magnet's magnetism acts at a distance, right? A stronger magnet's magnetism can act at a further distance. So this is my answer for part C. So I'm going to use a ruler and she can measure the maximum distance from which the bar magnet is able to attract the steel paper clip. And what I mentioned just now, a bar magnet mag uh, with a greater magnetic strength would be able to attract the steel paper clip from a further distance. And that concludes the answers and the discussion for the 2017 P5 SA2 Henry Park paper. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. If you like my discussions, please hit on the subscribe button below. If you'd like to find out more about my analysis of other questions in this paper, please click on the videos on the right. So thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next one.